On a very plush Johannesburg day, we decided to set ourselves at the Ambani Spa at the Crown Plaza Hotel to have a chat with Mimi from Mimi. <laughs> Welcome, darling. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us in your space. <laughs> now, <laughs> you know, we have this very humongous idea of you right now in entertainment. You're really right up there with the best of them. We never really got to talk about live and your experience of it because we blinked, you came in, we loved you, you left a dance <laughs> when you left. So what was your experience? Uh, live for me was one of the best experiences of my life in the sense that it taught me everything that I know today. I got to grow so much on live. Live, live I learned, like I said, everything that I know about the industry. But it was one of those situations where in learning so much, you, you end up even learning, you, you end up knowing too much of the politics that go in. Yes, fine, it was a great experience, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about my strength as a person. Um, you know, I remember walking on set and no one would speak to me. I remember my first episode of live, actually. Um, I walked in and Pila was the only person who spoke to me. There I was, no one was speaking to me. Everyone was just kind of like, whatever. It was really hard. You know, you deal with a lot of things where you have ideas of what people are like and what, yeah. pe what you think people are. That's another thing about the industry. You know, you watch someone on TV and you're like, oh, they're two so different great. things. And then, Two and then you meet things. someone and, and it's not the case, you know? So you left. So I left. And the reasoning? <laughs> <laughs> I just lied at this time. Yeah. I was tired of being the sidekick. You know, because I was. And That's you're being very I, honest about I that. Was. That's actually you know? and the very funny big thing of you. Is, is, you know, people would be like, oh, too fictionist or this or whatever. And it, it hurts. Thank you. It, it does. It, it does. I'm not going to lie to you. Worse when your co presenters are going to go, Minnie, the two sections. I'm like, ah, that's but rude. It dies. You rude. know? You know, I, I'd make a joke about it because I needed to take the pain away from it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I needed to not give a power. So, in some ways, I'd even say it myself. But it wasn't fun. And I left, and I've never looked back since. And as scary as that decision was, yeah. it was the best decision. Of you could have ever made, life. yeah. It was probably, not even probably, by far the best industry decision I've made since I've been. Look, it, it was a, it, you went through a major transition phase, and I'm sort of going to dial it back yeah. and, and, and go to before the wild even happened, there was an incident with Hush. Before that incident with Hush, people were questioning why a friendship with Rianda when we know your closest friend to be Nandi? you make the choice to be public about the fact that somebody just punched you in a club. Yeah. And, you know, share a cover with a lady who isn't necessarily in your age group, mm. but is your friend regardless. Yeah. You know, when, when the industry tries to define those boundaries for you, where is your headspace? Okay. First of all, with that, it, it wasn't even about, and I think people like to just assume friendships. Because yeah. you see with someone, it's a friend. I'm not saying she wasn't my friend, and, and I'm not saying she is. Um, it was one of those things where with her, she, she came to me as an older sister, you know. She came to me in a, in, in a point where I was very frustrated with, with wardrobe. You know, I was getting into wardrobe at live where um, I was told that you can't look good, you have to look cheaper than the next person. So I was in a position where I was really frustrated. She came forward, she had her label and she was like, I can help you, you know, and I mean, I wasn't getting paid a lot of money, so I didn't have money, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to go out there and say, let me invest in myself, let me go shopping once a week and let me get a great outfit for, for Friday's show. I didn't have enough money to do that and she came in and she was my saving grace for that and, you know, she styled me and, you know, she helped me in terms of what, you know, what stuff she had in her store and she dressed me and, you know, it really was an informal relationship, but she was there to help. The hush situation taught me, taught me that sometimes, you know, we use social media as a point of expression, but there's a responsibility to that as well. And yes, fine, I said it and I was upset, and you know, it hurt me because I, I, was, I was a victim in a situation that I had no control of. You know, it, it, what hurt me the most is that what it did is it opened a can of worms for people to say a thousand harsh things about me. People were saying I was drunk. People were saying I was, 
what was I doing in the club in the first place? I was there because I was working. You know, I was there to introduce an act. And I found myself in a situation that I had no control over. And I, and I was hurt. And I expressed myself. But having expressed myself on, on such a platform, and because I've got so many numbers, people got defensive. And when people get defensive, they start attacking. And when they start attacking, so many different people's names start getting dragged down the mud or, get, or try to get dragged down the mud. Yeah. And my immature self did it in an irresponsible way. I spoke up irresponsibly yeah. for something that I, I thought I was being responsible on.